ओके सो हेलो हाय एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग एंड हाउ इज योर प्रिपरेशन गोइंग ऑन राइट हाउ इज द प्रिपरेशन गोइंग ऑन वी नो दैट क्लास ट्वेल्व एग्जाम्स हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड एंड यू आर आल्सो प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द क्लास ट्वेल्व और गिविंग द क्लास ट्वेल्व एग्जाम्स एंड यू आर यू नो इन टोटल रिविशन एंड ऑल दीज जॉनर सो नाउ द थिंग कम्स कि हाउ वेल इज योर प्रिपरेशन गोइंग ऑन स्पेसिफिकली फॉर द नीट लेवल in the neat level you know that you need to prepare a bit more what you are studying in class 11 and 12 obviously the topics and everything needs to be much more concise and precise because as we have seen hum logo ka jo previous class tha wahan pe hum logo ne dekha hai ki options jo hai wo bahut close rehte hain right aur ye jo options itne close rehte hain na yahi problem create karte hain ki kaun sa wala option hoga so for this we need to have a clarity while we are choosing the answers obviously elimination technique to hai koi baat nahi hai but har waqt elimination technique kaam nahi aayega यू नो एलिमिनेशन टेक्निक को काम करने के लिए भी यू नीड टू हैव अ इंटेलिजेंट गेस राइट और इंटेलिजेंट कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी ओके चलो विदर फॉर द रेडियो वी विल स्टार्ट सो आई एम शांतल सर आई कंप्लीट माई मास्टर्स इन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड ऑल्सो टेकिंग द क्लासेज फॉर द नीट स्टूडेंट्स सिंस अ लॉन्ग एंड द टॉपिक्स दैट विल बी कवर टूडे वी नो दैट या एम सी क्यू फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन एंड वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन राइट सो बिफोर गेटिंग इन टू द टोटल डिटेल्स ऑफ टूडेज होल you know session i want to give you all some key points that you need to remember while you are attempting the exam that we call as your neat right so whenever you are doing previous year questions so there is a concept between or there is a difference between your previous year questions and previous year topics now these two are very different okay previous year question and previous year topic is very different how we can relate them like while you are Uh, reading or while you are solving the previous year question try to sync it with the previous year topic in our today's session we will see that there are two questions which came on the different years like one came in 2015 one came in 2016 those were previous year question but from the same topic so very important is that while you are solving the previous year question you must have a handbook where you will have all the you you are writing the notes we discussed it in the strategy video that there must be a handbook that from where you will write all your mistakes and all these things so in that part whenever you are solving the previous year question you must have the idea from which topic it was asked either it was from biological classification any specific part or it was from the thyroid gland or it was you know from the uh, principles of variations on which part the question was asked now as you will see the previous year question while you are solving it you need to have a clarity on the previous year topic so try to solve the or get a idea of the previous year topic while you are getting the idea of the previous year topic that will make your whole learning or whole revision very concise okay so you practice this thing as i know that you people are already uh, solving many previous year question we are we will also be doing the previous year questions we are doing so abhi kya hai na aap log previous year topics ke sath usse relate karo main aapko ek example aaj dikhaunga how it both became very much close to usse kya pata chalta hai ki agar humko previous year topics hum pare the because wo previous year questions mein aaye the so that gives us an edge or an opportunity from the others uh, you know your competitors to crack or to answer the uh, question in a more um, correct way correct manner theek hai to yahi baat hai to aap jab kar rahe ho to previous year topics ko ek bar you need to revise also along with that i will suggest that while you are doing your uh, previous year questions aap jab solve kar rahe ho there are many steps or many types of how you solve the questions so i we will be discussing the primary type today to jaise hum log aage badhenge we will discuss the several other types so the first type hota hai generally hum log kya karte hain we go for solving the 300 questions let's say we are solving the 300 questions after 300 questions solving the proper time period it mentioned ki this was my time period i have completed the all the questions and then i have kept it then i am coming back and reviewing it okay to isme kya hota hai isme ek disconnect reh jata hai इसका प्रॉस एंड कौन सा अगर देखें तो प्रॉस ये है इसका कि ऑब्वियसली इफ यू आर डूइंग दिस 300 क्वेश्चंस और द एन नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस इन अ प्रॉपर सैंपल पेपर और मॉक टेस्ट पेपर इट विल गिव योर टाइम मैनेजमेंट स्किल्स खुद से चोरी नहीं करना है तीन घंटा खत्म और वट एवर दैट स्टिपुलेटेड टाइम इज देयर थ्री आवर्स ट्वेंटी मिनट्स खत्म हम उठ के चले जाएंगे हम और नहीं देखेंगे जितना भी हुआ वो देखेंगे बाद में आज उसको रिवाइज करेंगे बट क्या होता है ना वाइल वी आर सॉल्विंग समथिंग एंड देन वी आर टोटली डूइंग लिविंग इट लेटर कमिंग बैक और एक एक क्वेश्चन लेके हम लोग कर रहे हैं सो इट विल अगेन टेक मोर टाइम वाइल यू आर डूइंग दिस एंड अगेन यू हैव टू रिलेट एवरीथिंग राइट सो ऑब्वियसली दिस स्टेप 
इज वेरी और दिस अप्रोच इज वेरी गुड फॉर योर टाइम मैनेजमेंट आपको पता चलेगा कि आप कितना कितना आपका कंप्लीशन uh, स्किल्स हो रहा है और कंप्लीशन परसेंटेज कितना आपका आ रहा है यू आर कंप्लीटिंग ऑल द थ्री हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन और टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन और हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन आर यू बींग एबल टू कंप्लीट आफ्टर और विद इन द स्टिपुलेटेड टाइम येस ऑब्वियसली बट समवेयर और दर रिटेंशन आफ्टर दिस और एनालिसिस आफ्टर दिस यू हैव गिवन द एग्जाम विल बी अ बिट लो सो इसका और एक मेथड है वो हम लोग फर्दर क्लासेस में डिस्कस करेंगे ठीक है सो कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू दैट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट नाउ वी नो दैट नीट को बहुत पसंद है करेक्ट इन करेक्ट ये सब पूछने के लिए राइट सो वेन एवर आई टोल्ड यू दैट यू आर सींग अ क्वेश्चन उसको पहले आप ध्यान से पढ़ो कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन फ्यूजन ऑफ टू सेल्स इज कॉल्ड कैरियोगी तो ये जो ऑप्शन है ये बच्चों का ऑप्शन ही आपको पता है कि फ्यूजन ऑफ टू सेल्स को कैरियोगी नहीं कहा जाता है बिकॉज जहां पे नाम कैरियो आ गया ये नाम आपका कैरियन से आ जाता है राइट एंड इट इज रिलेटेड विद द एमलगमेशन ऑफ द न्यूक्लियाई और द न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियाई जो होता है दैट विल फ्यूज विद अनदर न्यूक्लियाई एंड अल्टीमेटली इट विल फॉर्म द टू एन स्ट्रक्चर ओके नेक्स्ट फ्यूजन ऑफ प्रोटोप्लाज्म बिटवीन टू मोटाइल और नॉन मोटाइल गैमेट इज कॉल्ड प्लाज्मोगी ये हो भी सकता है बिकॉज इट्स पार्शियली करेक्ट लेट्स सी अदर ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट डिपेंड ऑन लिविंग प्लांट्स आर कॉल्ड सेप्रोफाइट अगेन दिस इज कंप्लीटली रॉन्ग है ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट डिपेंड ऑन लिविंग प्लांट्स कभी सेप्रोफाइट नहीं हो सकता यह डेड होना चाहिए था राइट सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म कैन फिक्स एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन इन स्पेशलाइज सेल कॉल्ड शीत सेल नो हियर कम्स योर नॉलेज आपको पता होना चाहिए कि कहाँ क्या होता है शीत सेल और ये जो बोला गया है कि एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन को फिक्स करता है डज इट एक्चुअली गेट फिक्स्ड बाय द शीत सेल्स नाउ वाइल वी वर स्टडिंग द बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन वी वर अंडर गोइंग सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम्स वी केम अक्रॉस साइनो बैक्टेरिया एंड इन साइनो बैक्टेरिया देर आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ नॉस्टॉक इज देयर एंड वी आर ऑल्सो हैविंग एग्जाम्पल्स एनाबेना और भी एग्जाम्पल्स है आई एम टेकिंग नॉस्टॉक एंड एनाबेना ना इन नॉस्टॉक एंड एनाबेना इफ यू सी द स्ट्रक्चर देन उन लोगों का जो स्ट्रक्चर रहता है तो एक जगह पे ना एक स्ट्रक्चर ऐसे बड़ा एक स्ट्रक्चर रहता है देन अगेन द स्मॉल बीज लाइक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस नाउ दिस बिग स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन द वेजिटेटिव सेल्स जो पास वाला सेल्स है वेजिटेटिव सेल्स बीच में जो बड़ा वाला स्ट्रक्चर है दैट इज नोन एज योर हेटेरोसिस्ट अब हेट्रोसिस्ट का काम क्या रहता है हेट्रोसिस्ट फिक्सेज एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन यस हेट्रोसिस्ट फिक्सेस दी एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन अब हेट्रोसिस्ट में क्यों वो फिक्स होता है ये आपका हो गया एक्स्ट्रा जब आप यही मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि कैसे हम लोग टॉपिक को रिलेट कर रहे हैं व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन वी आर रिलेटिंग विद द टॉपिक हर एक जो ऑप्शन से वी आर रिलेटिंग इट विद द टॉपिक्स कि अच्छा इसका मतलब क्या है इसका मतलब वी आर गोइंग टू द टॉपिक राइट सो सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म कैन फिक्स द एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन मतलब ये एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन से पूछ रहा है हमको ये निकालना होगा कि विच ऑर्गेनिज्म सर देयर दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन सो हेट्रोसिस्ट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द साइनो बैक्टीरियाज वेर वी ऑब्जर्व द एटमोस्फेरिक नाइट्रोजन टू बी फिक्स ये फिक्स क्यों होता है बिकॉज इट क्रिएट्स एन एन एरोबिक एनवायरमेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट क्रिएट्स एन एन एरोबिक एनवायरमेंट इससे फायदा क्या होगा एन एरोबिक एनवायरमेंट विल स्टिम्यूलेट और रेदर नॉट स्टिम्यूलेट टू बी एक्ट इट विल एक्टिवेट द एक्टिविटी ऑफ नाइट्रोजिनेज एंजाइम नाइट्रोजिनेज एंजाइम नाइट्रोजिनेज एंजाइम जो है दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन अब बात आ सकता है कि हेट्रोसिस्ट क्यों बाहर का वेजिटेटिव सेल्स में क्यों नहीं द आंसर इज दैट इन द आउटर वेजिटेटिव सेल्स देयर ऑक्सीजन प्रेजेंस इज देयर एंड ऑक्सीजन वोट अलाउ द स्टिम्यूलेशन ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द नाइट्रोजिनेज देयर बाई स्टॉपिंग द नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हेट्रोसिस्ट इसके लिए है तो ऑब्वियसली अगर ये है तो शीत सेल्स तो नहीं होंगे ये ऑप्शन कट हो गया सो वी आर लेफ्ट विद द ऑप्शन बी दैट फ्यूजन ऑफ प्रोटोप्लाजम बिटवीन टू मोटाइल एंड मोटाइल गैमेट्स इट कॉल प्लाज्मोगी अगर हम लोग देखें ये क्या बोलना चाह रहे हैं तो फ्यूजन ये अगर हम लोग देखें ऑब्वियसली द प्रोटोप्लास्ट ऑफ टू स्पेसिफिक सेल्स जब आप पास आ रहा है तो ये रहा एक सेल इसके अंदर हो गया एक हेप्लॉयड कर देते हैं क्योंकि ये बोला है गैमेट तो ये हेप्लॉयड हो जाता है देन यू नो दैट देर इज अ स्टेज दैट विल कम लाइक दिस और आई कैन ड्रॉ इट हियर जस्ट अ मोमेंट देर इज अ स्टेज दैट विल कम लाइक दिस वेर वी विल हैव बोथ द एन हियर राइट दिस स्टेज इज नोन एज योर डाई कैरियन स्टेज डाई कैरियन स्टेज अब ये जो डाई कैरियन स्टेज हो गया ना दिस डाई कैरियन स्टेज विल अंडर गो फेवरेबल कंडीशन और रेदर
a favorable condition and ultimately it will be forming as we know that two in formation from there again spores will be formed once the maturation the spores will be formed so first cancer aapka aagya b theek hai next question also so fusion of protoplasm between two motile or non motile gamete is called plasmogamy agar hum log dekhi incorrect statements mein so incorrect statements mein can be corrected as organism that fix the atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells are called as the heterocyst specialized cells karyogamy is nothing but a fusion of two nuclei means production of the diploid cell to end condition and organisms that depends on the living are called as your heterotrophs because they are depending on the living organisms next ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट प्रोड्यूस ड्यूरिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस बाय आपके पास ऑप्शन है तो ऑक्सीजन कहां से प्रोड्यूस नहीं होता है ड्यूरिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस नाउ ऑब्वियसली यू विल बी थिंकिंग कि हाउ टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन बट फॉर दिस यू नीड टू हैव द क्लैरिटी ऑफ ऑल दीज यू नो ऑल दीज ऑर्गेनिज्म यू नीड टू हैव अ प्रॉपर क्लैरिटी नॉट ओनली क्लैरिटी दे आर यूनिक फीचर्स मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ कि जब भी आप लोग टॉपिक्स को रिवाइज कर रहे हो दे आर विल बी एक्सेप्शन दैट एक्सेप्शन आर नीडेड बिकॉज नॉर्मली ये तो पूछा ही जाएगा कि ओके okay, आपका क्रोकोडाइल को पकड़ लिया या फिर फोर चेम्बर्ड हार्ट होता है या फिर टू चेम्बर्ड हार्ट होता है बट कौन से ऐसा रेप्टाइल है जहाँ पे द चेम्बर ऑफ हार्ट इज ऑल्टरिंग तो दैट एक्सेप्शनल थिंग्स दे विल बी आस्किंग सो एक्सेप्शनल जो है वो चीज़ आपको ज़्यादा ध्यान से पढ़ना चाहिए ओके नो कमिंग टू ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट प्रोड्यूस ड्यूरिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस बाय अगर हम लोग देखें यहाँ पे वी कैन ग्रुप लाइक साइकस नॉस्टॉक और चारा जो है वी कैन ग्रुप इट इनटू फॉर्मेशन और प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द ऑक्सीजन बट इन केस ऑफ द ग्रीन सल्फर बैक्टीरिया ये जो है ना ग्रीन सल्फर बैक्टीरिया दिस वोट बी अलाउविंग द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑफ ऑक्सीजन Why? What is the reason? Because they are not using the hydrogen donor, the hydrogen donor. They are not using the hydrogen donor of H two O, but they are using the hydrogen as a donor for your from your H two S. Thereby, the product that will be formed can be your sulfate, sulfur. Okay, let's see. so green sulfur bacteria utilizes the hydrogen sulfide or h2s instead of h2o and performs an oxygenic photosynthesis so they do not evolve the oxygen eukaryotic plants like cycas a gymnosperm chara a green algae and cyanobacteria carry out oxygenic photosynthesis right producing oxygen as a by product they use it use water as a hydrogen donor we know that in photosynthesis why we are calling water as a hydrogen donor because h2o remains there it breaks into h plus and oh minus ions from here we get oxygen and water and this h plus is utilized in nadp to convert it into nadph which takes part in your kelvin cycle along with your atp getting converted to adp production of glucose okay Now, <clears throat> select the wrong statement. यही वो क्वेश्चन है जो मैं आपको बोल रहा था ठीक है वी विल हैव दी ऑल्टरनेट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ये 2016 में आया था 2015 में भी इसी के ऊपर इसी कॉन्सेप्ट से क्वेश्चन आया था मतलब इसके जो टॉपिक हाउ इट इज बिकमिंग इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ज्यादातर नीट का भी है नीट देर इज ऑल्सो लिमिटेशन वाइल दे विल बी मेकिंग द क्वेश्चन सो दे वॉन्ट बी रिपीटिंग द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन ये तो स्कूल का एग्जाम नहीं है कि रिपीट कर दिया प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन वट दे विल डू दे विल रिपीट इट फ्रॉम द सेम टॉपिक राइट दे विल रिपीट इट बिकॉज जो इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स रहते हैं वहाँ से दे विल रिपीट इट ओके एंड देर आर ऑल्सो सेवरल यू नो सेवरल क्या बोल सकते सेवरल वेबसाइट वेर यू कैन नो दैट हाउ मच वेट इज दैट ईच द टॉपिक और ईच सब टॉपिक वॉज हैविंग और इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी रेफरेंस बुक उसके फर्स्ट पेज में लिखा रहता है कि कौन से टॉपिक से ये क्वेश्चन किया गया था ओके ना डायटोम्स आर माइक्रोस्कोपिक एंड फ्लोट यहाँ पे क्वेश्चन है सिलेक्ट द रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट अगेन अच्छे से क्वेश्चन को पढ़ना है यहाँ पे रॉन्ग बोला है राइट right तुमको नहीं सिलेक्ट करना है सो यू नीड टू सिलेक्ट दी इन करेक्ट वन लेट सी डायटोम्स आर माइक्रोस्कोपिक एंड फ्लूट पैसिवली इन वाटर सो डायटोम्स जब है आपका इतना कंसेप्चुअल नॉलेज होना चाहिए सो डायटोम्स आप यू कैन रिलेटेड विथ योर क्राइसोफाइट्स okay <clears throat> now the walls of diatom are easily destructible <clears throat> you have seen that in neat in the curricular agar hum dekhe na to uh, in the circular what they have told they have told ki they want uh, the students 
to have a precise understanding about the features of these organisms. So, this feature is diatoms ka feature mein aata hai. And see how they have asked you the question. Ek feature yahan pe galat kar diya hai. And you have to pick out that. Option number three. Diatomaceous earth is formed by the cell walls of the diatom. Chalo, diatom se hai, diatomaceous earth to hoga. Option D. Diatoms are the chief producers in the ocean. So, uh, coming to the, you can say the zooplankton, it is the chief producers in the oceans. We are observing, okay, it to be as the phytoplankton part, the chief producer of the oceans. Now, so, what is the option that is incorrect? Diatoms are microscopic and float passively in water. Yes, they are correct. But, this option is the walls of diatoms are easily destructible. This option is incorrect because, why? Because the walls of the diatoms, if we the walls of your diatoms is phytoplankton, if we are observing the walls of the diatom, they are having two groups. One is cellulose, another one is impregnated with your silica. And this impregnation with the silica makes their cell wall very hard. As it makes their cell wall very hard, it is not possible to destroy them easily okay not only that these you know yeah easily so these diatoms okay they were the primitive organisms that we observe and we have seen that these organisms when they die they fall on the their cell wall falls on the sea floor thereby also creating a major chunk of the sea floor and they are used in case of polishing industries and also in case of packaging several in other industries they are used so these this, the, while the sea floor is filled with the diatoms or the cell walls of the diatoms, that is known as your diatomaceous earth. Let's see. Yeah, the walls of diatoms are embedded with silica and thus the walls are indestructible. In diatoms, the cell wall, cellulose plus impregnated with silica forms two overlapping shells which fit together like a soap box. Again, an important feature. Okay, see the soap box formation. This is one. This is the lower part. So, epithica and hypothica is there. So, we are having the plates here. And this is the antipical horns. Now, the cell walls are also embedded with silica which makes them indestructible. Many diatoms leave behind the cell wall deposits. And their accumulation of these deposits over billions of years is known as your diatomaceous earth. Okay. Okay, so this question I have taken specifically because this type of question might get included. So bacterium divides every 35 minutes. So to answer this question, you must have clarity on binary fission on how a bacteria is dividing. So the division time that the bacteria is taking that is known as your generation time. So how many times it is getting generated? Okay, we can also call it as your doubling time. Now, what is doubling time and why we name it as doubling? Because we know that from a single bacterial cell, the most probable result is your two bacterial cell. From this again two, it will be forming like this. So, as it is doubling continuously, it is known as your doubling time. And within this doubling time, how many generations are getting formed? That is, uh, you know, that is the generation growth we need to understand. So, bacterium divides, it is given that bacterium divides every 35 minutes. So, you, they have given you that there is a bacterium, let's say the bacterium is X and it is dividing per 35 minutes. Very good. If a culture containing 10 to the power 5 cells per ml is grown for 175 minutes, what will be the cell concentration per ml after 170? So, they are wanting uh, to, uh, to ask you, ki after 175 minutes, what will be the amount of the growth that we observe in case of this bacteria? So, what are our given things? They have given us that it uh, divides every 35 minutes. Until how many times it has divided? Till 175 minutes have passed. So, obviously we can do like 175 by 35 we are doing. So, how much we are getting? We are getting like 5 times the doubling has happened. So, 5 comes as our doubling time we can take or doubling. 5 times doubling has happened. Okay. Now, as five times doubling has happened, we know in case of binary fission, what is happening from one single cell, there is always two cells development. So, we can write that their formula can be 2 to the power n. Always, uh, it is, uh, you know, it is duplicating like 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, like this, 2, 4, like this, it is getting formed. So, our doubling time, like five times it has doubled and we need to know the culture concentration. 
what we will do we are having that okay it doubled five times and we need to know how much after five times uh, doubling what is the ultimate after 175 minutes how much bacterial culture has been grown so obviously 2 to the power n so we will put here 2 to the power 5 so it will give us 32 so coming to this 32 match with this so the option c will be your answer so it is 32 into 10 to the power 5 cells okay so while this type of questions are coming these questions will test your two uh, specific uh, knowledge one is how the bacteria is growing that knowledge should be clear and also what is doubling time and what is the generation that is getting formed so within the doubling time within five doubling time the generation increased to 32 into 10 to the power 5 cells that means the colony increased so this is how you need to solve this type of questions let's see in details the time taken by a bacterium to divide is called a generation time or doubling time. Since each parent cell divides into two daughter cells, thereby we can write it as 2 to the power n. We will come to later. In this particular culture, the doubling time is 35 minutes. We are asked that what will be the cell concentration after 175 minutes. Given the generation time is 35 minutes, the total time elapsed is 175 minutes. So they have gone t by g, so coming to 175 divided by 35. So then the cells would have divided 5 times 175 by 35. You do the calculation it will come to 5. This means n equals to 5 and n is your number of the generations. So after one doubling a single cell would become two cells. In the second generation these two cells will become four and so on it will be starting to grow. Then the simple formula can be 2 to the power n where n will be representing as your 5 in this particular case. So 2 to the power 5 we are having 32. This calculation assumes that the starting culture contained in a cell and in this problem we are informed that the culture contained in the initial cell concentration of 10 to the 5, 5 cells per ml. Therefore, the final concentration after 175 minutes should be 10 to the power 5 into 32 cells per ml. So this is how you need to solve these type of questions that is coming in your NEET exam. Okay. Chalo, next question. Pick out the wrong statement. Option A, again they are asking for your wrong statement, okay. Cell wall is absent in animalia. Yes, if we observe that, yeah, we are not having the cell wall present in the animals, but we are having it in case of prokaryotes and in case of plant cell. The question might come, ki why in, not in case of animals? Due to the uh, conditions where they live. If we observe in case of plants, the cell wall is required to provide that rigidity that is present. But in case of animal cells, the cell wall is not required, thereby increasing more of its flexibility movement and locomotion is one of the chief part of the animals uh, in the initial animals obviously the locomotion is not possible but movement is there right so cell wall is absent in animalia so this is not wrong this is your correct option okay protista have photosynthetic and heterotrophic modes of nutrition now if we observe in case of protista and we take some uh, examples then yes they are having they are, they showcase both the photosynthetic and the heterotrophic modes of the nutrition some fungi are edible yes we do eat some fungi right we do love to eat mushrooms there are many people who do eat mushrooms coming to the last one nuclear membrane is present in monera so they have not given you bacteria they have written the name monera so you need to be very clear with the classification that monera protista planty animalia you need to be very clear with this classification so obviously as they are giving monera they are telling nuclear membrane is present in monera but if monera falls under prokaryotic then we know that in prokaryotic there is no well defined nucleus we all know what is the meaning of prokaryotes because pro means primitive and carrion means nucleus so it is a primitive nucleus it is not true nucleus primitive nucleus so that is not having a well-defined nucleus if the uh, organism is not having the kingdom is not having a well-defined nucleus how come there will be how there will be nuclear membrane so it is quite obvious that nuclear membrane nahi hoga because because agar nucleus hi nahi hai bhai to nuclear membrane aayega kahan se right so this will help you to analyze the answer and ultimately give you the option d as your answer okay so in protista kingdom members exhibit both autotrophic that is giant kelp sea lettuce as well as heterotrophic that is in case of amoeba plasmodium 
Animal cells lack cell wall and there are few fungi that are edible. Monera is a kingdom that contains unicellular organisms with a prokaryotic cell organization that is which lacks nuclear membrane and other membrane bound organelles. Okay. Chalo, next question. Ciliates differ from all other protozoans in. Socho, kya hoga? Itna deir se to main bol raho. Aap log batao kya hoga? Ciliates differ from all other protozoans in. Yahan pe aapko ciliates ka idea hona chahiye, protozoans ka idea hona chahiye. Bataiye, kya hoga? <coughs> okay. So if we observe the basic features of ciliates and also other protozoan, then we will observe, yes, having pseudopoda. Again, read the question. They are telling you ciliates differ from. So you need not to find the similarity. Rather, you need to find the difference, the uniqueness. Okay. So having pseudopodia for capturing prey. Okay. Having a contractile vacuole for removing excess water. Okay. Using flagella for locomotion. For me, if I was the student while I was reading this, now these three would confuse me, right? But if you see the last one, having two types of nuclei, this is a unique character. And again, I told while you are going through the topic, the uniqueness, the exceptions, you need to have a clarity upon or you need to read it thoroughly. These exceptions, this uniqueness, when he question, he will ask you normally. Aapka question jab aega, they will ask you ki what is the uniqueness, right? So this unique questions will be there. So if you see the options, the last option is telling you having two types of nuclei. Abhi ye jo hai na, this is the unique feature of ciliates. Okay. So if this unique feature of ciliates, obviously what will be the answer? Then option D is the answer because ciliates differ from all other protozoans in option D having the two types of nucleus. So, these two types of nucleus ka naam kya hota hai? Mega nucleus and micro. Yaad rakhna, micro jo hai, that is related with your reproduction uh, processes and mega jo hai, that is related with your metabolism. Ab ye metabolism ek naam se mat likhna. <coughs> metabolism mein yaad rakhna. <coughs> Protein synthesis ho sakta hai. Protein synthesis mein kaam aa sakta hai. Okay. Yeah, great. <sighs> Respiration mein kama sakta hai. All these are the processes by which the mega nucleus perform. So, ye dono cheez yaad rakhna. Mega ho gaya, micro ho gaya. Uniqueness hai ciliates ka. Thus, the question has been added. Thik hai? Ye kya dekh rahe hum log? Dekho, uniqueness ko wo log nikal nikal ke dhoon rahe. That is the reason while you are solving your previous year questions related with your previous year topic. Okay. You need to change your strategy how you are attempting the question paper or the mock test paper while you are giving the exam. Okay. Ghar mein jab aap mock test de rahe ho, to jaise mene bola tha, ek ho gaya hamara type ki hum previous year questions ko kar rahe ho. We are solving all the questions by going by the time and as we are going by the time after solving, then we are going for review. This is one type is happening. Okay. So ye jo ho gaya, ek time kar liya, fir review kar liya, isme kya hota hai na, the connection is lost of each questions. और यहां पे ऑब्वियसली प्रोसेस का कि यहां पे टाइम मैनेजमेंट ज्यादा से ज्यादा आपको सीखने को मिलेगा बट व्हेन यू आर डन विद दिस टाइम इज गेटिंग मैनेज देन गो फॉर द टाइप 2 टाइप 2 में हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं कि ओके वी आर हैविंग दिस एंड व्हाइल यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग और व्हाइल यू आर सॉल्विंग द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस अब सॉल्व कर लो प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस आफ्टर दैट ओनली यू आर लुकिंग एट द आंसर सिर्फ वही आंसर देख रहे हो अच्छा प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन किया था ये मैंने किया था ये करेक्ट है और ये आपका हो गया ये भी करेक्ट है अच्छा करेक्ट है मतलब ठीक है इफ इट इज इनकरेक्ट तभी पढ़ रहे हो कि अच्छा ठीक है ये इनकरेक्ट हो गया खत्म सिर्फ पढ़ के छोड़ दिया नहीं ये भी गलत है ये आपको टेंपरेरी रिटेंशन देगा बट परमानेंट रिटेंशन नहीं देगा अगर गलत हो रहा है तो वो उसको एक पर्टिकुलर कॉपी में लिखो कि ये मेरा गलत हो रहा है और अगर गलत हो रहा है तो उसके रिगार्डिंग जो भी है वो फिर से पढ़ाई करने का और गो थ्रू दैट स्पेसिफिक टॉपिक ओके दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू नीड टू डू दिस इज टाइप 2 दैट यू कैन डू राइट सो कमिंग टू दिस पार्ट दैट सिलिएट्स डिफर फ्रॉम अदर प्रोटोजोआंस इन हैविंग टू टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियाई एग्जांपल पैरामोशियम हैज टू टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियाई वन इज मैक्रो वन इज माइक्रो Okay, you can also write mega and micro, no problem. Ciliates differ from all other protozoans in having two types of nuclei. 
these two nuclei are usually of different size that is one is the mega nucleus and the another one is the micro okay so you can remember like r hai to reproduction hoga but don't try to remember like this this is like short term process but go through it then you will remember q hai ye agar aap puchoge ki why the answer is this then you will get the answer okay so the former former matlab yahan pe ho gaya mega nucleus it controls the metabolism metabolism mein aapka respiration aa gaya protein synthesis aa gaya all this digestion aa gaya all this part whereas the latter is concerned with the reproduction so reproduction se micronucleus ka nata hai example paramecium in other protozoans like amoeba single nucleus is present which is involved in metabolism and reproduction so again go for the unique characteristics theek hai chalo see this question 2015 this question came and in 2016 the same from the same question didn't came but from the same topic the question came In 2016, it came as is. What is the incorrect statement in regards to chrysophytes? चलो मैंने बोल ही दिया आंसर यहाँ पे. What is the incorrect statement in regards to chrysophytes? And 2015 में ये जो क्वेश्चन आया था, वहाँ पर भी chrysophytes था, but वहाँ पे क्वेश्चन अलग था. Soap box formation अभी हम लोगों ने पढ़ा. Soap box formation होता है. Soap box formation is a unique characteristic in case of the chrysophytes. And ये जो chrysophytes का क्वेश्चन है, देखो 2015 में भी आया, 2016 में भी आया. Question same नहीं था. Topic same था. you have to have an extra edge than your other peers and competitors right ki aap kaise pad rahe ho wo matter kar rahe books sabke paas same hai ncert sabke paas same hai everyone is having the uh, same number of resources excluding a group of people they are having the same number of you all are having all the resources how you are utilizing the resource that comes to your main part so whenever you are doing again i am telling previous year questions do consider opting for the previous year topics also okay this will help you to have the vivid idea of what you are learning and also go through all the options that will help you okay coming to the question now in which group of organisms the cell walls of two thin overlapping cells shells which fit together now here they have just written overlapping shell what they are mentioning is the soap box formation because again see how they have given they have not written this soap box formation because they know that if they will write soap box there will be certain books where that is written soap box chrysophytes done but that's why they have given overlapping shell so you need to have an idea ki in which species we are having this overlapping shell concept and the shell is indestructible and also when it dies when the organism dies it falls to the base of the sea or makes a sea floor that ultimately forms your diatomaceous earth so let's see yes the answer is the chrysophytes so as we observe this part the upper part is epitheca lower part is hypotheca you can see there is one flagella that is obtained here <clears throat> and in diatoms the cell walls form two thin overlapping shells which fit together as in a soap box and this structure is known as your soap box formation chrysophytes are placed under the kingdom of protista this group includes the diatoms and the golden algae very important the golden algae those are known as your desmids are also observed now the why the color is golden due to the present of e of a carotenoid pigment what is the name of the carotenoid pigment fucoxanthin is present okay this gives it the golden color they are also known as desmid and most of them are photosynthetic in diatoms the cell walls form two thin overlapping cells and which fit together as in a soap box formation okay clear let's come to the next question organisms called methanogens are most abundant in old 2011 cattle yard polluted stream hot spring sulfur rock organisms called methanogens are most abundant so they are asking for the organisms that is the methanogens if we clarify methanogens these are like your extremophiles or uh, extremophiles they either live in too hot condition too salty condition or too cold condition and we know that methanogens archi bacteria this group they fall into archi bacteria the, ex the exceptional case exceptional uh, you know exceptional part we can say now organisms called methanogens are most abundant in a polluted stream ho gaya hot spring ho gaya sulfur rock ho gaya so and the cattle yard is given you in your answer now 
if you have gone through the methanogens then and the chapter of uh, this in the biological classification the features of methanogens then when you are studying archaebacteria then you must have gone through the production of the methanogen gas or H, uh, CH4 and H2S gas H2S is hydrogen sulfide from the cattle yard in the high amount because cattle do produce a lot of the methane gas and this is why the reason behind that is the food habit of the cattle the food habit of the cattle if we see the food habit of the cattle then the food they are having the food they are having that is they are continuously chewing their ruminants they are continuously chewing it making it a uh, you know it a uh, viscous formation so that they can engulf it or not engulf they can digest it so yeah food is there and this food is broken down by the methanogenic bacteria methanogenic bacteria that is present within the uh, gut of the that is present within the gut of the cattle okay that is present in the gut of the cattle so the food is there which is broken down into simpler substance okay they are breaking down these into simpler substance and thereby producing carbon dioxide is also produced and also your hydrogen is produced and from this carbon dioxide the production of your the production of your uh, you know the CH4 gets to produce. So yes as we can see in the case of the cattle yard then from cattle yard the most amount of methanogens are observed because in the cattle yard the cattle are present and methanogens are present inside the ruminants or inside your uh, we can say the inside the gut of the cattle which is producing a lot of the methanogen gas or methane gas okay. So you can see there are certain videos where you will observe that a cow is there who is bloated or a cattle is there who is bloated very big bloated and there is a hole that is punched and all the methane gas is coming out and sometimes in YouTube you can see a video where people are uh, you know uh, that is a cattle farm and where people have inflammated uh, that uh, methane gas and it is like the cow is breathing uh, you know giving out uh, total we can say giving out uh, fire it is happening okay so you can observe so yes the answer would be your cattle yard because methanogens coming from the archaebacteria group are present in the gut of several ruminants animals such as the cows and the buffaloes and they are responsible for the production of the methane that is the biogas from the dung of this animals we do consider or we do take away or extract the methane gas thus they are most abundant in the cattle yard okay so again while you are reading this question the topic is getting important you need to have a clarity on not only cattle yard but what are methanogens okay chromatophore takes part in very easy question need 2015 we can see that photosynthesis growth movement and respiration so always when you there are several keywords or there are several names in biology there are chromosomes there are chlorosomes there are chromatophores different types of names are there now while you are trying to understand any concept you need to break the name as possible like photosynthesis we break into photo and synthesis here also if you break that chromatophores chroma comes from the meaning of your color right so chromatophore it is coming in the means of your color now in your biology as you have observed the growth movement and respiration these three things are not induced or stimulated somehow with the help of the color but there is one process that is totally depending on the color of the pigment that is the chlorophyll pigment so obviously the chlorophyll pigment it is as it is present it is helping in the absorption of the sunlight thereby not absorption actually it takes few part and reflects back so thereby what is happening it is exciting the molecule and uh, proceeding with the process of photosynthesis so chromatophores will obviously take part in the photosynthesis let's see chromatophores are pigment that takes part in photosynthesis chromatophores are found in members of phototropic bacteria very important they are found in phototropic bacteria what are phototropic because they are depending on the sunlight for the production of their food again phototropic photo is coming from photons photons is the light particles they contain bacterial chlorophyll pigments and carotenoids and take part in the photosynthesis next in purple bacteria such as rhodospirillium rubrum the light harvesting protein are intrinsic to the chromatophore 
membrane so they are present in the inner part or within embedded within the chromatophores okay however in green sulfur bacteria they are arranged in specialized antenna complex called the chlorosome so whatever might be the case we are observing that all these cases chromatophores are responsible in your photosynthesis process okay chalo next question which among the following are the smallest living cells known without a definite cell wall pathogenic to plants as well as animals and can survive without oxygen again a unique statement they have just taken the statement and given what they are saying it is telling why which among the following are the smallest living cells so they have not told what is a prokaryote eukaryote just living cells known without a definite cell wall pathogenic to plants uniqueness pathogenic to plants specifically as well as animals again broadened and can survive without oxygen pseudomonas nostoc bacillus okay so these three we are observing pseudomonas nostoc and bacillus so this unique character that we observe is only in the case of your smallest living cell see this is your keyword they are telling which among the following are the smallest living cells so as we have studied the first chapter the living organisms or the cell or you know the cell the structure and shape and structure of the cell the size of the cell when we have studied we have come across this statement the answer would be your microplasma smallest cell so mycoplasma here what i am trying to tell you ki while you are reading the question mark your hints so your hint was smallest living cells because rest was broad and yeah definite cell wall without that is second hint this is hint number 1 hint number 2 pathogenic to plant and animals this was your broad hint you cannot consider it but your streamlining hint was or precise hint was your smallest living cells okay so mycoplasma is included included in the class molecules they are primitive organisms they are lacking a cell wall they do not have a cell wall they show great antibiotic resistance now can you can anyone tell me that cell wall and antibiotic resistance what is the difference what is the uh, you know relation see majorly what happens the antibiotics that we have right it stops a specific protein or the expression of certain protein in the bacteria that will stop the production of the cell wall because cell wall is protecting the bacteria and if the cell wall is not present then what will happen as the cell wall uh, as we can break the cell wall then the whole bacteria becomes fragile but in case there is a bacteria which is not having any cell wall that means it is not antibiotic means it is from birth it is antibiotic resistance the reason behind that is ki there our antibiotics won't won't work because hamare paas aisa koi antibiotic hai hi nahi jo uska cell wall ko tod sake uske paas to cell wall hai hi nahi right it becomes more prone in infection but normal agar hum bacteria ke baat kare those are having the cell walls we can induce the antibiotics which will break the cell wall making the all the contents of the cell to come out and ultimately creating a death environment for the bacteria and these can be parasitic as well as saprophytic in nature so it can be parasitic and saprophytic that is depending on the dead and decaying they are responsible for many respiratory disorders Bacillus, if we observe on the other hand, is a gram-positive aerobic bacteria. पता है ना gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria क्या होता है, gram-staining क्या होता है. So gram-positive bacteria होता है वहाँ पे जो peptidoglycan layer है, they are more thick. Whereas gram-negative में thin layer होता है. Gram-positive as it is thick, it can retain the crystal while it. Gram-negative as it is thin, thereby what happens? The counter stain will be there while we'll be washing it. After we are washing it with the ethanol, we are giving the counter stain that is saffronin. It retains the saffronin color. So primary stain, visual violet is gone. Gone. A counter stain, uh, your saffronin is there. That is your gram negative. That proves that the peptidoglycan layer is not thick. So bacillus is gram positive aerobic bacteria containing a cell membrane and a cell wall as well. Pseudomonas is also a pathogenic bacteria and coming because you know pseudomonas do cause some pathogenic diseases and nostoc is a blue green algae which helps in the nitrogen fixation specifically in your heterocyst with the presence of the heterocyst methanogens belong to ye to hum log pehle hi discuss kiye hai obviously methanogens are your yaad rakhna ye cheez extremophiles okay these are your 
एक्सट्रीमोफाइल्स ये एकदम एक्सट्रीम होते हैं एक्सट्रीम कंडीशंस में रहते हैं ओके इट कैन बी माइट बी इट इज़ लाइक इन द एक्सट्रीम सलाइन कंडीशन एक्सट्रीम हीट कंडीशन एक्सट्रीम कोल्ड कंडीशन कुछ भी हो जाए एक्सट्रीम में रहते हैं एंड ऑल्सो इन द हॉट स्प्रिंग्स दे आर फाउंड ओके सो मिथानोजेंस बिलोंग टू एक्सट्रीमो फाइल्स एंड द एक्सट्रीमो फाइल्स बिलोंग टू दी ग्रुप ऑफ योर आर्की बैक्टीरिया ओके सो मिथानोजेंस बिलोंग टू आर्की बैक्टीरिया एंड दे आर स्ट्रिक्ट एंड एरोब्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दीज आर स्ट्रिक्ट एंड एरोब्स ऑक्सीजन दे आर नॉट लाइकिंग दे आर ऑटोट्रॉप्स विच ऑप्टेन बोथ एनर्जी एंड कार्बन फ्रॉम द डिकम्पोजिशन प्रोडक्ट्स so whenever there is a decomposition is occurring they are resulting in the decomposition thereby it is producing the methane they occur in marshy areas where they convert the formic acid and carbon dioxide into methane with the help of hydrogen those who are taking the screenshot they can take the screenshot and mark this line or who are making the notes that yes in marshy areas they are converting the formic acid and carbon dioxide into methane with the help of the hydrogen This capability is commercially exploited in the production of methane and fuel gas inside gobar gas plant. We all know that we are moving towards the biodiesel and the biofuel because our fossil fuel reserves will be exhausted very soon and to make a fossil fuel reserve in it cannot happen instantly. So we need to find an alternative. Now what government has done government has a told ki okay we will mix a part of the biofuel and also the normal fuel and we will make something biodiesel which will uh, which is now used and as it is now getting used thereby what is happening uh, we are trying to get alternative source of fuel and obviously from here if we see that as we are having the methane methane is inflammable thereby the fuel gas can be extracted okay inside the gobar gas plant some of the methanogens live as symbionts inside rumen of herbivorous animals that chew their cud very important they are maintaining a symbiotic relationship that is mutualism they will help in they are producing the methane they are having the food and ultimately they are also uh, you know uh, they are uh, the shelter is provided to them by the ruminants these archaea bacteria are helpful to the ruminants in fermentation of cellulose very important because as we talk about the herbivores they are having or they are feeding only on the uh, vegetation now all these vegetations are are the plants they are having the cellulose and cellulose is very hard to digest and to make it digest or make it happen the methanogens play an important role so the symbiotic relationship thus begins between the methanogens along with the uh, you know ruminants select the wrong statement great again they are asking wrong statement pseudopodia are locomotory and feeding structure in all sporozoans okay question mark mushroom belong to basidiomycetes you need to have an idea what are basidiomycetes okay cell wall is present in members of fungi and plant you can write here okay correct mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell in all kingdoms except monera again you need to have an idea monera they are talking about your bacteria and they are not having the mitochondria and thereby how they are preparing their atp so they are utilizing the cell membrane to produce the atp so okay these three are correct the wrong statement would be yes pseudopodia are locomotory and feeding structures in case of sporozoans no pseudopodia is neither the locomotory nor the feeding structure because sporozoans if we observe they are most probably or mostly as endoparasite if we take the example of plasmodium we know that plasmodium is a protozoan that undergoes multiple fission and ultimately this multiple fission results in the plasmodium to be more pathogenic uh, by its different strain like plasmodium falciferum plasmodium malariae plasmodium ovale these all will be creating the disease malaria there are different phases inside our body there is trophozoite sporozoite phases and this disease is endoparasitic that it will enter inside our body and it will stay within our body and infect us within from within they lack any locomotors organelles like cilia flagella pseudopodia they are having the vector and the vector is your female mosquito pseudopodia are found in amoeboid protozoans example amoeba and entamoeba so the wrong statement here would be this because they are not requiring the pseudopodia or locomotory organs for their feedings uh, for in the sporozoans coming to the 13th questions which of the following statement about inclusion bodies is incorrect again inclusion bodies 
So for this question to be answered, you need to have a clarity on what is inclusion body or else you won't be able to answer this. Now if we talk about inclusion bodies in details, now inclusion bodies are, you know, we can say like when a cell, it is infected with bacteria or virus then replication of pathogen happens and as the replication of pathogen happens in the end it leaves certain granules Uh, yeah, certain granules freely in the cytoplasm. Now these granules are known as your inclusion bodies. They can be utilized as a diagnostic method to diagnose whether you are your cell or your body is infected with some other uh, diseases or not. Moreover, these inclusion bodies, if we see that in case of the prokaryotes, they can, uh, in case of, uh, not only in case of prokaryote, both prokaryote and eukaryote, they can act as a storage granule where they will be storing the glycogen or, you know, the um, starch, all these things that can be stored in or that can be stored by there. So we can write these are the aggregate of the uh, for simple or the stable substances. Now if we see, they lie free in the cytoplasm. They represent reserve material in cytoplasm. They are not bound by any membrane. Again, they are asking incorrect. These are involved in ingestion of food particles. Never. These are not at all involved in your ingestion of food particles. Let's see some of the important names of the inclusion bodies. Okay. So, inclusion bodies are the aggregates of the stable substance like proteins in the cytoplasm. And like for example, they will form like something like this. Like this inclusion bodies will be present like here. Now, okay. So, they are formed due to the multiplication of virus or bacteria in the host cell and can also be used as a diagnostic for the respective viral and bacterial disease. They also help in storage of cellular metabolic products, uh, products and are not membrane bound. If we see there is Negri bodies, these are a type of inclusion bodies that is, uh, you know, that is observed after the rabies virus is infected some cell. Molluscum bodies, if it is molluscum contagiosum virus. Guanidary bodies, vaccinia virus, Bollinger bodies, foul pox virus and different we are having. So these are intracytoplasmic, some are intranuclear in inclusion bodies. For example, we are having intranuclear basophilic, which is a virus, adenovirus and this is the inclusion body that is formed by it. So all these inclusion bodies have been found within the cell and whenever within a cell this inclusion body is found then the doctors can easily after seeing the diagnostic result they can easily refer ki, okay if this is the inclusion body that is found within the cell thereby this disease is the most probable thing uh, or most probable disease that has happened. They will obviously go for other confirmatory test also. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Viruses are obligate parasites incorrect again they are asking okay you need to know what is this name meaning of obligate parasite okay it has come several times in your exams not only in class 11 12 in need also while you are studying you will understand or while you are uh, studying the chapter of the biological classification obligate parasite will come it is that means they are not uh, you know they are utilizing the host machinery for their own growth infective constituent in virus is a protein coat and prions consist of abnormally folded proteins and virus lack a protein coat you know you have again have to clarity of the infectious protein particles now infectious protein and infectious nucleic acid particle is there infectious protein particle if we observe these are known as your prions consist of yes abnormally folded proteins and viroids these lack a protein coat these are your infected or you know manipulated or con not manipulated these are your altered toxic genetic material we can say yes viruses are obligate parasite the incorrect answer would be infective constituent in the virus is the protein coat no it is not the protein coat it is the gene that is responsible always remember that the protein coat that the virus is ha having that is giving it its virulence it is increasing the virulence or the 
toxic behavior of that virus the contagious behavior the how how well it can infect infectious behavior it is increasing but it is increasing the virulence but the exact if we observe that which is the infective constituent that is causing the infection to be passed that is your gene because we know this gene if it is like retro a virus if we observe rna virus reverse transcriptase is there rna to dna it will integrate with the host dna ultimately telling the host dna or utilizing the host replication machinery for the formation of the uh, multiplication of the new viruses okay so yes infective constituents of viruses are their genetic materials which can either be rna or dna and not the protein coat it the if a protein coat is there consisting of the receptors that is causing the increasing the virulence of the pathogen which of the following statement is wrong for viroids they lack a protein coat absolutely not wrong these are naked nucleus acids rna infecting the plants majorly they are smaller than viruses absolutely they are, they cause infections correct their rna is of high molecular weight it is a question of common sense that okay if we observe if if it is smaller than virus they are causing infection okay leave it if it is smaller than virus it is so 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 tiny how will it have your rna of high molecular weight it will have a rna of the low molecular weight thereby the answer would be wrong and this question's answer would be option d their rna is of high molecular wait so let's see the detailed solution that viroids lack a protein coat correct they are smaller than viruses and cause infections in animals and humans viroids do not have rna of high molecular weight they are not having the rna of high molecular weight they are having the rna of low molecular weight okay chalo with this we have completed today's session we will again meet tomorrow you can use the code shine5 for all your doubts you will be uh, meeting with a tutor within just 60 seconds you can ask the doubt and you can clear your doubt so don't forget to utilize these free sessions the next class will be tomorrow that is february 22nd 7 to 8 pm and don't forget to like share and subscribe our youtube channel avd india boards exam that is the mainly the you know we have to you have to subscribe to our crack iit j with avd this channel don't forget to this is the class 10 channel you need to crack iit je and neat with avd so this is the name of the channel that you need to subscribe and stay tuned for more updates so keep practicing till then take care stay safe bye signing off